Welcome back for maybe one last time tonight, unless Semorg can pull something out that unfortunately we just did not get to see in the previous map of Border. We are one up to... Uh, <laughs> I've already forgotten the name. Team One. It's been a long night. We are one up to Team, team one. one. Come on. Get with it. One, We're nearly done. Team We're nearly one. there. Almost let's there. Go. Coastline. Let's go. One more map. Or maybe two. Ah, uh, one more map. One more map. One I got more map. Up in the excitement. It would be surprising with what we've just seen for Team One not to be able to pull themselves to the 2-0 here, especially with the kind of precedent that the team has historically. Yeah, they get defense first as well. So that's always going to bode well. Uh, and whenever Team One had like a really great attacking start, that's something to look forward to in Coastline. Yeah. Because att attacks are basic on this map. Yeah, and I think that's the kind of breakdown of it as well. And it makes... Because if the team are good at attacking and it breaks it down quickly, you can find your defense really just cut in half by very quick movements. And that's what Team 1 were very good at. Semorg, to be fair, they had some moments. Uh, obviously, they had a couple of standout plays as well, especially from Fusion. But it's going to take more than one standout play or two to be able to pull themselves to the win. Some Nomad ban right off the rip from Sam Org. That's what they also banned uh, during, of, of course, um, on border, which mm, I wouldn't say had like a massive impact. Uh, IQ, that, uh, that's a new one. Uh, we have not seen it in a long, long time. Last time I seen an IQ ban, it was back whenever she was in, in her prime with the, the frag grenades back in the day. Why would you go for that? Because now, basically, you're forced to ban Valkyrie and Echo. If you're, but if, honestly, if you're both teams, you ban Valkyrie and Echo right now. Well, there There's goes. the Echo. Yeah. And Semorg just bans Valkyrie, and, and there you go. Surely has to be the Valk ban. They were very quick to decide, and I think they've kind of worked out the same puzzle. No. Ooh. Okay, they... so Valk's up. Valk's up. Valk's up. IQ's down. You're on Maestro's coastline. Maestro's up. A lot of information now. So Four. it's going to kind of play out the same way, I think, as what Border did. Sure, IQ isn't there. Valkyrie cameras can be pesky, but overall, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. A different if Echo got through, then we really would have been cooking with gas. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it, I guess, is, you know, you have so much information and you've got to look at the sight lines that this map kind of offers because a lot of them can be pretty long and pretty linear any side is often at risk to being jumped out on or at least peaked out on which valkyrie is going to play into any kind of central play is covered by the top to bottom danger donut center it's risky now to do this without an iq a banner making an appearance, which is an operator that Team One didn't touch at all, and I think they've realised that yeah, hard breach is not the biggest thing that you kind of need in this in this entire map. Really, the only way we kind of see a banner being used is either to open up a VIP angle, which you can see uh, Fusion is reinforcing right now, or to use like a line of a banner pelt to open up the quad wall. And that would be really the only instances that hard breach is, is used, and it's specifically just for the top floor as well. Because you think about every other bomb site, they could just be pushed by verticality, which is a big thing in club, uh, Clubhouse on coastline. Uh, and then even you know you look at kitchen, you can simply walk in towards delivery. Uh, you look at blue bar. Again, a one that you don't really need breaching for whenever you can utilize the verticality. And for Penthouse and Theater, which is a bomb site that we're never really going to see, what's he doing? What was this? I'm not even sure. Oh, I know what it was. It was a double jump out. Uh, basically, Fusion would bait, so Team 1 would look directly where Fusion that was at, and then that's whenever K1 would jump out and try and kill them and pull. But nobody spawned there. Ah, okay. I've seen that before. I've seen it on Villa specifically. It's, I mean, you know, it's the Mad Max, that's bait kind of image, and it just did not work, unfortunately. Fusion, however, is the first to open up the frags here. And again, this was a player that really lit up in the previous map. They kind of frequently found themselves in a position to drop people, and with the Jackal off the board, that's just going to make their game even more viable. They're going to play as aggressively, as wide, and as hard as they can, and hopefully just keep picking up bodies in the meantime. It's going to force Team 1 to be a little bit slower and a little bit steadier in terms of watching their rotations and watching their cover. Obviously, Nomad is off the board as well, but Gridlock isn't, and she saw some uses previously, so she's always one where you can kind of keep that little bit of control. Here is Habana starting to open up the quad wall, and has 
has it ready to pop as she just jumps free over to luggage. Not contested at all, but they will obviously know that someone is just behind that side. I'm not even sure at this point if anyone's in Aqua. Looks like they're free to just move all the way in, get all of this ground and push against this barbed wire and against the point itself. Team one forcing their way in towards Aquarium. They still have the Duckaby calls, but Sam Org feels if they just don't care anymore, they will peek everything and anything that they can get their hands on. And well, there's Luke had gone. So now a 5v3, but Skadina is in a great position, but still more kills being added up. And nobody from Team One is, is here for the refrags. And Smoke appears in front of Skadina, so does Legion, but he barely misses the shots. My Shrook Armor is still being up as well. I can provide constant information and Falls knows he can't push that side of things. And Team One, they've came to a halt, and it's just down to Skadina as the C4 from below is nailed Falls. And well, looks to beat Sam Org. They're going to take this first round. Well, that was a very quick and aggressive play style. And again, this is something we said about Team 1, is they didn't really look like they'd woken up on the previous map. Whereas here, some Org, uh, some Org, uh, completely... Yeah, there's some Org, bro. Just, yeah. oh, just some problem. Org. Just some Org. They forgot uh, the O. Yeah, they've completely lit up. They've come in full guns blaring blazing and they're trying to find just if they can keep that pace and stay one step ahead of team one keep that momentum they might be able to find more and more rounds at the same time i guess it's how many prods can you do before the sleeping giant wakes up because at some point if this does keep going the way where semorg are free to just move around the map and roam and get these frags and pick bodies team one surely will go okay let's 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 get out of the chair now. Let's let's get this sorted. Blue bar up next for Sam Org. Have to have a look to see how this will lay out for them. Uh, team one, I feel as if they're going to catch on now the way that Sam Org are playing because it's a lot different from what we kind of seen from Border, where Sam Org were looking very timid. That's kind of why we seen them rack up, of course, the first four rounds for them. Uh, but now they're just winning. All guns blazing, not really caring what Team 1 want to do. And I think Team 1 will kind of read into that. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some quick rushes from Team 1. If they know there's going to be an aggressive room game, uh, then by all means, just go for the quick push. Five man stump one guy in towards Sunrise. That's a viable strategy. Setting themselves up now. They have bought the gridlock to keep a bit more control of the, well, let's say energetic Rome game that we saw previously from Sem Org. And at the same time, they've obviously dropped out the hard destruction, as you said. They can use it to shepherd. They can use it to kind of get, you know, in a position where they know they're going to be more comfortable. Realizing that with Mirror off the board, an Echo as well, holding onto Penthouse isn't viable, they've decided to pick up the Sledge and bring that as a way of trying to crack open this vertical. So assuming a top-down push is what we're going to see from Team 1. In the meantime, still some point architecture being done and extensions all the way out to Garage with K1 having Lambo door open and Level Leap doubling up to try and find an early frag. No joy and no luck. And in that, Fusion isn't far away as well. And a C4 is already ripped, torn, and thrown. Hitting Skadina for a lot of health, but not getting the damage. And this is just continual aggression from Semorg to hit them before they even get close to the building. Yeah, and I'm surprised that Team 1 hasn't read into that. Well, I say that. There goes Fusion, and there also goes K1. So it will be a nice trade out of kills for Team 1 to get them started off. Still three more to find, though. Oh, there's another kill for them as well. So Team 1 have completely torn Sam Org limb from limb inside this round. And yeah, another one falls and a 1v5 up. Flawless round for Team 1. That's what we call a response. Yeah, as I said, how many pokes does it take to wake the bear? And apparently just one. They instantly shut back down, realized how they wanted to push and take that, and did it with so much aggression and so much pace that... Yep. Well, how do you stop and respond to that? Another blue bar hold is what they're going to opt for. 1-1 one, one is the score, and I'm wondering if we're going to see Semorg be as brutal and, well, attempted to be as brutal as they were on the Lambo door and the service door, or if they're going to try a little bit more of a, shall we say, tactile approach to the aggression. Maybe have someone playing upstairs and watch the door on the entrance. Maybe be a little bit more cautious with their holds. 
Oh, Blackbeard comes out to play. I think the first one that we've honestly seen all tournament. I haven't seen a Blackbeard yet. Um, I think that was one, because I remember commenting Are about you how... sure? It, yeah, because I think they were using it as a push. I cannot remember who, but... I don't remember a Blackbeard at all. I really don't. We'll have to go back to the, the stats at some point. Um, I think... I th maybe. Maybe there's some cool stats somewhere. Either way, it's definitely rare. I if it has been bought, it's been bought once. So, it, you know, I guess we'll see if they're using that as a way to kind of counter and keep control. I wonder if they thought they would go to a different point. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of windows. There so is. always helps whenever you do bring a Blackbeard. And, you know, they've kind of sacked off all of the hard breach because they've realized, hey, they're, it's not going to be Hooker, so we don't need to bring the Habana. We as well bring an operator who can help us. So that's why, you know, they've kind of brought out some of the more annoying operators, such as the Jackal and there could be also. Uh, oh, well, there goes Dokubi straight away. Again, more aggression from Sam Org. That's what I like to see from them. This is kind of giving me deja vu to the first play day where, you know, yeah, Gaiman and Liquid were just running wild. It's just, I guess we'll see how sustainable it is, really, from Semorg. Because it's violent, sure, but spawn peeking doors and that stuff against a team that you know has good coordination can only really get you so far. They're finding their way in. They're using the Jackal to try and find the footprints of the people that escaped round towards the office side. But otherwise, it's just swings and pre-fires and still three pest launch. Oh, no. No pest launches. Sorry. Misread that in pocket as they get more footprints and push Mozzie further and further back via the scanning. Skadina. In the meantime, locks off one, but Demasi finds one of his own in Lucid. And now it's just all of the kitchen under their control as they try and do a flat push across the ground floor. There is a waiting of people trying to peek. There's the spotting of the cross across, and now Reduct is going to creep forward as the Blackbeard and see if they can just offer some support to the man trapped on the other side. Yeah, Blackbeard needs to try and get in a better position because at the moment, he's not a great area to take these long-range fights. That Maestro camera is going to be called out and wonder if Skidino will rotate around and try and eliminate that. One on his blue stairs, of course, and one also inside of Sunrise. The other two located in towards Office, which is where Team One want to try and push in towards. And Fusion has the wide peak, and there's also Skadina Falls, and there's a great response straight away from the aggression that Team One tried to add in there. But Sam Org, Ferdran goes to them. Well, 2-1, they met aggression with aggression, and it worked much better that time. But obviously, Team One tried a different push the second time. They bought different operators, split it across the um, both the east and the west sides, or the north and the south sides even. And, you know, it just didn't really come to fruition. Hooker is where we're going to re return to. Team One will probably be well aware that this is where we're going to return to, and we're seeing generally the same loadout. Blackbeard is on the board alongside a couple of other familiar picks, including Takebi, who might be able to get a little bit more use this time round. They seem to be wanting to pinpoint and shut down the Rome game, bringing the Jackal, doubling up with the Takebi, and trying to just find where they're moving to and limit the freedom that players like Fusion and Level are currently enjoying, I would say a bit too much of. They're allowed to be so aggressive against the doorway, find a frag sometimes, not others, and then just pull all the way back to point and then rotate and then find another run out and another ridiculous position to be in. Hooker now. And still no Habana. So they've completely left the hard breacher in the dust. Still bringing Dokubi and Jackal, and, and you're losing that Dokubi very early on never bodes well. Whenever you're, you know, you're basically you're sacrificing an operator to bring big, uh, to bring one that has, you know, a big impact on the game. We know those calls can be so troublesome, and I don't know. It's, it's a tough one for Team One if they're gonna get constantly spawn peaked. I don't know. Maybe just wait and spawn for like 30 seconds or so. That's it. I mean, you know what they're doing and you know how they're doing it. So just respond with what you do best, which is skill, which is a great response that we've seen from your team so far. They've been very aggressive in closing down the opposite sides. It seems like they want to just try and get internal control to KB 
was droning ahead for the path as well, so not just running into the firefight of the window, and I guess maybe trying to offer a little bit of semblance of control. Falls has found their way in and underneath so far without being taken off before they begin to get close to the building, which is a good change from the previous round of being capped by Lambo Door quickly. Two minutes, 20, all the time in the world, and look at the pace of Skadina pre-firing all the usual spots and just trying to find bodies. And there is K1 suffering a huge amount of damage so far. They know the pressure's on those stairs. The blast goes off. They're going to drone it. And this is, again, Team 1 waking up with a bit more Vim and Vinegar than previously. Also, change it from the R4C onto the G36C, and the reason why he's done that is to give him a little bit more control when fighting longer ranges. You have the Egg Hog, of course, and here's Blackbeard standard on hook a window. But already loses one of his shields. I would like to see him towards the double window towards uh, the east side more than anything, but it doesn't matter if our Team 1 are looking to push in towards the hooker. They have that blue stairs on lock. And now it just goes into, well, just a flurry of kills Kadena. G36E, a triple kill to finish it off, and yet again, Another response from Team 1, and flawless one at that. Yeah, when they win, they win in style. And that is 2-2, two, two. so far flawless both times. Skadina just rolling in there and getting yeah. the triple. Mm -hmm. I think that just shows what they're capable of. And, you know, the rounds that they're losing, they're slow and they're worried, and then they normally get a little bit messed up. It's because they lose the first blood. Mm. That's what kind of throws them off their game, and they need to try and get that out of their system if they want to make things you know, work for them. But we move into our next round, and yet again, another hooker. Sam Org. The whole thing about, about this particular map, Coastline, is that you have literally every bombsite open. You know, even, yes, Mira's banned, you still have that penthouse and fear. That's still doable. Attack Kitchen is a great bombsite. For, you know, a lot of teams, and if they're playing in this aggress uh, aggressive nature and they want to try and set them upstairs with some roamers and even C4s from below, that could be a really strong bombsite for them, but they're just not going to opt for it. Instead, going to go back to the hooker, a bombsite which, you know, they've won once, but also have lost it in the past. Yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, this is, if we want to talk about them doing the same bomb points, the previous map, where they ran Armoury five times yep. of their six defenses. You know, they like kind of repeating points until they get them to work. They trust in their ability to go, well, this didn't work, but we can make it work. We can do a couple of tweaks and a couple of changes, and I guess we'll see if they can keep this back and forth on this map that is otherwise was missing on the first map. Okay. Fusion has been kind of the talk of the town so far on Sam Org. He's been really the big standout player. Well, for me anyway, Fluk, don't know about you. Has he kind of been the guy that's uh, sparked your interest? Um, in in the game in general or just in that team? Well, uh, for sure, in the game in general. Uh, potentially. I mean, wow. What? That was a wide swing and run out. K1 finds one. In the meantime, the smoke has suffered as well. I think smoke's the bigger loss in the grand scheme of things, especially on a point like Hooker, but you've got to realize someone is underneath. They just charge in and both of them go down. Not 100% sure what they attempted there. Rise finds one in the meantime. The grenade goes out. They're swinging against the KB. who's swinging left and right, and Level finds the double. And now it's a one versus three, and I'm not really sure why all of these decisions are being made. Just swinging past doors and windows. So now Team 1, they tried to go for that. Let's walk in and see if we can frag them out. But Sam Org, they had their number from the word go. Refrags have been really lacking for Team 1. The fact that Jaeger is able to jump out that far off the sunrise window and not get killed is beyond me. He should be shut down straight away as it happens, but doesn't swing that way. Now, Team 1, they need to get themselves another bounce back round, and it will be on the kitchen this time, so we are going to see them, you know, kind of switch things up. But still, a lot of work to be done for Team 1 especially, if they want to try and take it into their defensive half, which didn't look all that impressive, kind of what we were expecting from them. They took a 2-2 on border, but ev every single bit of work was done in the attack anyway. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of way it was breaking down on the previous one, was it... It wasn't, their lockdown on the attacks just seemed much more comfortable for Team 1. And obviously, when we talk about it, this was Semorg's map. 
they've kind of got a play style that they wanted to bring to it, and they're bringing it very aggressively. They're very comfortable bringing this play style as well. And, you know, we always talk about the sustainability of aggression, and it's always down to, I guess, the game and, and how the game kind of breaks down. And so far, it's working well for them. So far, they're happy, they're confident, they're comfortable, and they're giving Team One a decent run for their money. The thing I'm curious to see, obviously, is if we do end up 3-3 on the split, um, is how they can kind of respond with that on their attacks, because you can't really do runouts on your attack. You can't, like, it. you can rush, sure, but it's way harder to translate that level, that scream out the map, scream out the building, and try to find bodies, level of aggression, to your attacks than it is on your defense. Ooh, spicy. Skadina just opening up with a levy of kills and the G36C is ringing true for him. Let's see if he can add any more onto the tally. Still, Sam Org, they're kind of slacking on shutting down Skadina because whenever he starts getting fired up, boy, it's difficult to take down. Service entrance is where they'll try and rotate over towards. With Team 1 now, they're basically going to try and force their way in via the utility that's still at their disposal, along with having the added pressure of Rise and Skadina breathing down the back of their throats. Let's see if Team 1 can try and muster up the courage to finally go for the push, which they look as if they're going to go for as they the quad wall. Maestro hits the deck. But then there's a quick refry coming in, but straight away, Team 1 still all in control. Fusion upstairs, nowhere near the bomb site. Diffuser will get planted there. There's C4, know exactly where he is. And, well, Fusion, gonna try his best. Oh, great shot and really nice aim from him. Being able to shut down Skadina like that is no easy task, but there's still three more members. And, well, yeah, again, back and forth is how it goes. It looks to be the exact same story once more. Well, this jump out is where K1 at least found his frag. No one there to pick it up, but is there anything? There's the Claymore dropped, and the bullets are there waiting for the appearance of the Valkyrie. And at that point in the post plan, as you said, three people up. It's a pretty hard ask. 3-3 three, three is the split. It has been biddly back and forth this entire round, but now Team 1 are on the defense. All of those rounds, I think they took where Skadina just decided to steamroll through the map. And I'm curious again to see what the attacks from Semorg are like on this map. As I was saying before, it you know, it, that level of aggression, that level of run out, you can't really replicate that on this side of things. You sure can play aggressive roams and can manipulate the map to how you want and keep it active and but it's just, you don't really get the same leeway. Well, you look at the attacks from Team 1. They weren't afraid to take the gunfights. You look at the defense from Samorg. They weren't afraid to take the gunfights. I do think it's going to be the switch of roles. They're just going to play, again, more frag-heavy. Both sides' strategies haven't really been existence from, I would say, both teams. You look at the setups from Sam Org, very standard, very basic. Everything's been won or lost straight off the roam game. And that, that's not even exaggeration. It literally, how many plants has there been? Like one. One? Yeah, exactly. Just that one. just shows it up. It's literally down to the frags. We've had rounds end by, you know, the, the two-minute mark. I know, and I think that's it's both a frightening and exciting thing about their playstyle, but it's just you know, they're just going for these frags and going for these bodies. I guess it's the trade off of when team one look like they wanna do it, they just charge in and get them. They make it look effortless. But then other rounds they just look like they don't really wanna be here and they don't really care and everything starts to fall apart. And I guess it's finding the balance of both. Lukid is looking for some revenge of his own, hopped up on the big table as Rise and Reduct both go for hookah side runouts, yep. neither landing anything, unfortunately. Another spawn peak as well, but K1, I feel, has a suspicion somebody's hunting for him, and there goes the drone in right underneath the double window. I wonder if Jaeger's going to be a crazy man and go for the jump out, but I think he knows better to not try and give himself away. Like, even look at the confidence from the Maestro, trying to peek in towards Ruins. But Skidina, he has it prepped, so he knows he can't go for the jump out, and there he goes! And there's the stab kill! Assassin's Creed style death from above! Skidina has now entered in towards service. He knows there's one more player beside him. It's gonna be the Twitch, and is anybody gonna be there to help him? No wide swings in. You see Lesion lurking in the back stairs, and... 
Well, fusion, he gets out of there. Well, Sledge is a loss, has the grenade as well, but it's not the biggest loss out of the operators on the board. At the same time, they're not really bringing hard destruction. If anything, what seems like the most vital tool in either of these teams' arsenals throughout this playstyle is the Jackal. And Jackal's still kicking, so they can at least try and hunt something. And there is Buck opening up some holes around the chassis to get a bit more control and force them away from it to try and lean into an aqua side plant. You can see they want to stack up on that side. They have them trying to find the man above, and the gridlocks are popping off, but until they get the man out of aqua, they're not confident enough to push up. Maestro is on cool vibes, uh, and there is one body towards the luggage side as well. So Team 1 are in a position where they might be able to pick up trades and refrags if need be, but with a minute 10 on, they've got to start applying pressure onto 1's defense. And Semorg, so far, they're just struggling to find the body. The dance is occurring above and below. The bullets are starting to fly from the defenders, but nothing as of yet. It's Valkyrie that is the thorn in the side right now, as they just cannot seem to get them out of Aqua to comfortably start the push. Team 1 are holding firm, but it's more eyes than Sam Orr, because the only thing they've managed to take is Blue Bar. Aquarium still in control off the defense, and there's the quick swing around and reduct. Well, I don't know how he's got away with that one. <laughs> I As love <laughs> Look at Twitch, just there idling by. There should have been a quick refrag there, but just didn't come in. The Deagle is primed and ready. I love that. They threw the C4 and then just went, oh, I'll just shoot them, and then didn't even blow the C4 in the end, and then they got away with it. Oh, but they did not get away with that swing round. Drops the C4, Rice finds another, Fusion gets the hit on the run out from Reduct, but with 10 seconds and smoke canisters left, what can you do here, Buck? Have to get through the barbed wire, and at this point, gonna have to either get two amazing frags or stick the plant, and now it's just stick the plant as this round is over. Team one, they hold it firm. Time getting away from Sam Org. Definitely think that opening frag uh, helps Team One out quite a bit. Gets their morale boosted, gets their confidence going, and whenever you're trading off your Jaeger for at least a kill, Jaegers use the utilities, place down the ADSs, place down the barbed wire. Sledge use any of his nades? No, no, none, none, unfortunately. And Buck, I don't even think used any of them either. So it's just, you know, it's. It's confusing, and and I guess it's a little bit of trouble, um, but it's how it kind of breaks down, I guess. It, when they're not quite using the utility that they have, especially to clear stuff like the close kind of damage, and, you know, things just start to fall apart, unfortunately. This is the first time this game where someone has managed to take two rounds in a row, and it's also the first time this map that they've taken you know, the lead team one and put mm -hmm. themselves in a position where they can lock this off in just two maps. Yeah, they can. They can simply rack up the rounds now. Only three away. Doable. I have to go for a kitchen first, and even if they get that far, then it will be penthouse or blue bar afterwards. So now for the kitchen. Generically, Team 1, they, they like to play aggressive. You know, they're bringing the ACOGs out, ready to have some fun. There's Capcan for a change, perhaps predicting the aggressive nature that Sam Org may try and take up themselves with, you know, the fast pushes that also come to their lineup. Sam Org are 100% going for the upstairs route. You're bringing the buck, you're bringing the sledge for that certain reason, and even the gridlock to try and cover off the flanks with only two sets of staircase for coastline. It doesn't leave the defenders with a whole lot of options in terms of rotation, skidding. Going for the pull run out. Pistol out as well. I actually think he pistol them rather than the, using the T5 and doesn't land anything at the moment. He gave it a good go though. I think everyone's. At least you tried. Thing. Yeah, well, it looks like they're setting up to go for the service push. You can hear the gridlocks going off. They obviously have the Capital. He's put the claimer underneath the window jump out as well to catch the man that is probably eventually at this point going to jump out of that window and try and yeah. get a frag. Otherwise, they have the smokes to be able to just mask a quick push. Going to try and potentially drop the barbed wire and do such a thing. But with the cap can on them, with all that cover, they've got to be a bit cautious. Bouncing the grenade around the corner doesn't quite land on anyone, unfortunately. There is a second grenade from the side of Sledge on the door. And there is the cross peak run out from the bottom. But they do manage to find Skadina just before he finds his way back around the corner. Fusion, yet again, a player that has had pretty big impact for the hopes of Sem Org so far. But otherwise, it comes down to cap can causing problems from above. Team one on their defense, aggressive as always, having the cap can primed and ready. Could we see the jump out? 
but no, there is actually the frag goes in favor of Sam Morgan. Even Redock tees back right in towards the bathroom. Is that hatch is being pressured? And this is what we kind of expected from Sam Org is the upstairs clear out. And let's see if Capcan falls. And yes, he does. So now Sam Org in the prime position to take this round. They have still a soft destructor. So now all hopes lie on falls and look at and probably have him look at alive is the best option now for team one and falls. He still has all of his utility. If he can pick off the smoke for the holes that Sledge is making, and that really opened things up nicely for Team 1, but somebody's in the bomb site. What a great reaction shot from Falls, and here comes the Capital Boss, along with Track Stingers. The peek comes in from Falls, but there's no need for you to peek in. There goes the Shotgun Plant, trying to go in right in the midst of the smoke. Still pressure from above. The Sledgehammer trying to create as much havoc as he can. The Stim comes in, but the Diffuser has been planted. Falls, he eliminates said Sledge, but then there's the Capital pushes straight in, looking not ready for it. Sam Ork around from them, a rapid one at that. 4-4. Four, four. Yet again, we are back to level pegging, but obviously Team 1 still have a little bit of the upper hand here. A lot of deaths happening from just misplaced placement and misplaced aggression, and it just seems like neither team is really quite in a position to just keep control of this. Every single time it looks like someone's confident, it just falls apart. Usually it's Team 1, I would say. They seem to just completely dominate around or not really show up for the next, and it's been that most of this game. Skadina, however, has been pretty consistently showing up 11 to 6. Lukid, unfortunately, not quite able to find the same impact that he's historically had. In the meantime, Fusion and K1 both leading away on the opposite team, and from then on, it kind of middles and mixes as we fall down both lines. But Kitchen Service, they're going to take for a second time, and I guess we'll see if they can have a little bit more success holding yeah, on to it from what was otherwise a pretty convincing close down from the side of Sam Org. Team one. Sloppy round, especially that early game. Could have had it there in the late game and was questionable from the smoke to kind of peek around in the midst of the fire and didn't make a whole lot of sense to me why he would go for that rather than create his own peek hole because he did have the shotgun at the end of the day. And look at whenever smoke was doing all of that nonsense that he was at, where was look at? Was he just watching him do it? He took about, you know, five million years to get a stim pistol out to stim him up. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he was panicking more about getting the stim pistol off than anything. Skadina yet again going for this aggressive spawn peak, and yet again, that hasn't landed. I don't think anyone successfully got the spawn peak off as of the moment of writing, but I guess we'll find out if we see one before the end of this pretty electric coastline. Otherwise, they're setting themselves up for a similar push to how they did it before. Gridlock's already churning away as they just mask their entrance and give themselves a little bit more protection against the pace and close quarters close down that can be done as they also put a bit of pressure on Lambo door this time around. There is a body inside covering it and Fusion drops Skadina and that could be a very vital kill. As we said, Skadina is really the player that has been showing up in the hands of Team 1 so far. And with your lesion as well, that means that you're a little bit better off when you come to those last minute pushes. Fusion again fires in through and well, the quick response. That's one thing Team 1 are great at is managing a oh, 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 rise. Oh, you filthy bugger. And now a free on free and Team 1 in the driving seat, and Sam Org have it all to do. Yeah, what a wonderful pick there to be able to get that. Wants to drop this Claymore, so they have a bit more confidence running out, and there is confidence, and they're probably not going to catch anyone this late in the game. I'd be amazed if someone's putting more pressure on that window, but at the same time, you never really know. It's actually Capitao is a little bit wide as he's trying to be a bit confident and comfortable, but there isn't any of that now. The Claymore is gone. K1 still trying to find a way in and drop as much of that barbed wire as they can to set themselves up for their setup for the push, and they have all otherwise stacked up on that eastern side. Still have a bit of idea if they want to put some against Lambo door, but otherwise it's closed, and there's probably a body in there at this point. It seems like both One and Sam are setting themselves up to have a battle along this eastern wall, and at this point, we've just got to see who is the one to come out the favorite, because so far, this fragging match has been exceptionally close. Look at his kind of being non-existent for the most part, and this is, you know, the round where he needs to make an impact for it, because you can't leave Falls and Rise to do it all. 
Just like he left Falls to do it last time. Finally, look at wakes up, and that's the kill that has kind of swung all the favor in the team one. I don't think that Sam Orger going to be able to break down the wall. It is the two anchors still left inside of Kitchen. That shield as well will help him to try and peek aggressively. And now they rotate in towards the reception and trying to capital him out. And that's good bait, good coverage, but that has wasted all of the utility. And this is where the smoke can prove dividend. As always, we know that wall of gas to eliminate any threat coming in from a specific entryway. One in each doorway, one in B, one in A, and let's see if Team 1 can try and hold it in. Pushes in aggressively and actually loses that bombs, but no, we're actually going to see the smokes come in, and Capital has the diffuser. More pings go off. We need to see the plant come in. Oh, the kills from Falls in Team 1. They win it down to time. They really shouldn't have won that. That was... Just a kind of cacophony of errors there from the side of Sam Org for them to just kind of do so much. They saw the smoke go off. There was 20 seconds they went. We need to split push this side, this side, opposite sides, close down. Got the maestro who was aggressively trying to hold and peek from behind the bomb chassis with some great shooting and then it fell apart. The Lesion, Skadina, from long beyond the grave, who was dropped in the opening 30 seconds. So that was one of maybe two Lesion mines coming in so clutch at the end of that round and stopping the plant go off. And the Smoke, who was otherwise quite a big bit in almost winning them the round mm -hmm. previously yeah. with that shotgun just holding on. But 5-4... This game has been back and forth, and I think at this point, Team 1 were almost a little bit lucky to get themselves ahead in the midst of it. Can they pull away, though? Can they try and kick it into sixth gear and finally break hold of the shackles as a back and forth match if I've ever seen one? Blue Bar Sunrise now, the first time for Team 1 they'll be taking on this defense. And let's see the setup. Uh, again, standard operators from them. Nothing's really out of the ordinary. Look it off of the dock instead on the Maestro this time around. And Valkyrie to provide a bit more information. Uh, again, no IQ since that was a ban from Team 1. And surprised they haven't really utilized the Valkyrie as well as I kind of feel as if they should have. You know, we've seen some great stuff from Semorg with the information they were gathering from the Valkyrie cameras. And has been a big thing that haven't seen a whole lot of Valkyrie cameras actually been shot. A lot more pings, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it is we've just kind of, from Team 1, like they've just been doing similar things to what Semorg were doing, but with a little bit less of the kind of, not tenacity, but finesse uh -huh. that was being brought from Semorg. Semorg were bringing the information, they were bringing the Valkyrie, they were bringing that kind of balance of being able to feed and filter towards those runouts and that level of aggression and the cover. And it seems like Team 1 just have these rounds where they completely go all in and it's Team 1 as we expect them. And then the next round they pull back and they're like, eh, I don't really care about this one. And then the next round is the aggression. And then in the meantime, Skadina's just trying to put as many bodies down as possible. It's, I, I, you know, I guess it would be interesting to see how pressured they feel or how pressured they're, how much pressure they're kind of putting on themselves in this map. Um, but they've definitely been a little bit, <laughs> they've been cruising, I think, throughout this game. In cruise control they go. Oh, first opening engagement goes in favor of Team 1, and never we've seen that happen. It typically does fall into their lap. Fusion, again, great player inside this series and has really stood out for me, and potential player for the future we could see try and liven things up. Skidina inside kitchen by himself has plenty of goo mines. This is a great thing about playing uh, Legion in kitchen is that you can sanction off all of the main entries in the kitchen. So again, you know, gives you advantage in the gunfight, but also he has an impact that he can use as rotations in towards courtyard. This is the most important thing I would take out of that one. Well, a minute 10 on, and they're still trying to find their way to set up above and be comfortable. Reduct in the meantime, rotates up and completely gets Fusion by surprise in an almost unstereotypical lapse of judgment there. Fusion charged right in, maybe getting the feed from the man inside Hooker. Level said, it's all clear, come on over. And then, well, it just was not. Valkyrie was there, unfortunately, and she knocked you back down a peg. Dumasi is trying to close down on the opposite side with the gridlock, maybe throw some tracks onto Cool Vibes and keep some control there and make sure that doesn't happen again. But 
in the meantime, there is another person that just lists dreamily into the bullets of someone else. Gabriel Oss finally finds another frag, hasn't been able to have a huge impact, and Demasi finds Reduct in the meantime with a shotgun that is rare to see get kills. And now it's level, trying to put pressure directly onto the point. Lukid is in the middle of the danger donut, waiting for this person to round the corner here and be able to put them out of their misery. And that is the Capitan with a diffuser as well. Three fires and swings, but Lucid wins out the firefight with the beastly gunman. Is now the last one left. There is a two versus one, but think of where the diffuser is. It has just been picked up. There is only some cover on the blue side. They are running it all over to the opposite side and hiding behind the bar, and there will just be gunfire cover onto this doorway post-plant situation. Looking for information from the Maestro cams and trying to do as much as they can, maybe knowing that the gridlock is on only a sliver of health, but it's how much you trust those calls and now how much you trust this gun. Have slightly funneled yourself into a bit of a close bit and gridlock there. That would have been your opportunity to down and get rid of her. Pre-fires and pushes forward and uses the opportunity of the reload to swing round and going close. The smoke grenade is not far away. There's one to your right and no, Semorg. 5-5. Five, five. They have put up such a good fight against Team 1. They've really impressed us. A, a team which really isn't anything. There's nothing that we can go off about this team. And time and time again, they have proven that they can run against Team 1, who had a phenomenal season, barely missed out on going to Japan. And now we move into round number 11. So we are confirmed for all 12 rounds in regular time. And will we reach that sweet, sweet overtime? Or can either Team 1 or Sam Org finish it here and now? The fact that the last five rounds, it's gone plant victory. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then a timeout victory. And then a plant victory. And then a timeout victory. And then a plant victory. It is just... Everything is playing to the end against these guys. They're letting it kind of battle. And I don't know if that's the thing about Team 1's defensive style on this map compared to how it was with Semorg in the opening kind of rounds where they try to find every firefight as far away from the point as possible. Maybe if Team 1, you know, found a little bit of it further away, maybe if they doubled down. It's always a book of maybes, really. And you just think, how is it coming down to this wire so consistently? And out of these rounds, the first one they won on Hookah was com completely controlled by Team 1. They were confident, they were comfortable. Their second defensive round was the one where it came down to the wire with the shotgun and the panic and all of that stuff. And you know, you just kind of think, okay, we're back on Hookah. This was a good point for them. But if they win this, statistically, it's been back and forth the entire game between every single round, apart from one where the step was slightly broken and changed to put Team 1 in the lead. They've then got to go to another point. And other points have been mixed, I think is fair to say. Team 1. How can they respond after what we can only describe as... An incredible Sam Org performance and kind of just <laughs> just looking at Fusion. He has been that sturdy, sturdy rock in the camp of Sam Org and, well, taking a lot of damage already as I kind of bigged them up and Reduct looking to play aggressive and there's Zombie in spawn. He catches out and again levies into the Capital but does not land the kill. And Fusion, even such a sliver of HP, still kills Kadena. But then the refrag is there from Lucid. There's another kill coming in from Team 1, and this looks to be a fast one, as you can see still twitching Capital and such low HP. And this has put a lot on the shoulders of Sam Org. Well, there's another pick there from Rise as he rotates round, puts them in the 4-2 situation. Yet again, it's a round where they've thrown themselves into the driving seat. Pushes up from the side and gets the man on the white beak baited. There's the Twitcher and getting a zap in the meantime. And there is Reduct running out Team 1. It was actually a Twitch drone kill. The, the yeah, twi that, <laughs> that was his, uh, the Mozzie's Twitch drone as well. Wow. That was... <laughs> That's the first time today. Okay. Big old list of firsts of today. So yes. there was the first 7-0. Mm -hmm. There was the first third map. There was the first Twitch drone mozzie kill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
There's quite a few seconds and quite a few thirds. Second and third ace was in the earlier day. I had a list somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, first time the diffuser went down with all 10 players still alive. Wow. That happened earlier today. Um, And at this point, we might be on with our second third map. Team one, they're on the match point, sure. But if statistics are be believed, we're going to hit overtime. Blue bar it is. You look at their kitchen, which was open for them. They've won it once and lost it once. Blue bar, they've only played it the one time and they lost it. Can they rectify their mistakes? Can they realize what they've did wrong? Will we see that same aggressive nature from Team 1, just like the last round where they pretty much killed everybody before they even got into the building? Sam Org. That was... that. <laughs> Sam Org have looked so good and then so bad all at the same time. It's a real hit or miss. And if you look at statistics, this should be a hit for them. Yeah, I mean, the last time they took the blue bar, it was... A pretty well put together. Obviously, we saw some aggression from Team 1, and it came down to a two versus one in a post plant with Lucid having lost all of the ground and having to swing through defenders, and they just had the beat on him the entire time. So you would assume they would be able to take it again, but, you know, can Team 1 just find the way to get through this, get through one round, find another second round in a row. Yet again, Reduct is going for swing outs and early peaks. They've got the Valkyrie and they're again leaning into that aggression, leaving into that kind of balance of things as Lucid has the eyes from the Maestro cams and Bryce is waiting for someone to approach those officers door. Reduct is there to double up and help out, offer some support, realizing that there is a bit of an active push coming from this side, but they're otherwise heading across Aqua and trying to get a bit of vertical. Skadina playing in Kitchen this time. Last time he was on the Legion and he switched over to the Pulse. So can provide much more uh, room coverage as he has a free speed now rather than the two. And also information gathering, which is another great tool to try and support players such as Reduct. You want to try and roam towards the top floor and you can see spotting out players and where they're going to be located. Also see four kills, of course, is always going to be posted for him. Well, looks like they're looping up the cool vibe stairs, maybe to try and see four over the top, and it goes, but it doesn't catch. Fusion finds Lucid, and Reese finds Dumasi in the meantime. And yet again, two more players fall from either side. Solo health, and just does not pull off the firefight. Don't know why he went for that pick. That's a really risky one to go for, and ah, that's a tricky one. So now we move in, and four versus three in favor of Sam Org. Gabrielos looking for anything he can, and, well, the only thing he's going to find is Falls in his SMG 11. And especially whenever Buck is on such low HP, this looks as if Team 1 could try and close it out, but Fusion's still alive for Sam Org. But then again, Skadina is still alive for Team 1, and as I say his name, he chimes over, and we'll eliminate K1, so now a 2 versus 3, and now this is where the door is slowly shutting for Sam Org, and looks as if the ticket's about to be punched for Team 1 right into the quarters. Well, half health, if that, and, well, not even that was level as he tries to creep his way slowly closer. Fusion obviously offering the other side. And as you said, it has seemed like Fusion versus is Skadina and everyone else is along for the trip. Closing down with some pressure, but there's the man in the close corner. And now it is down to just one operator, just one player. And it's a heck of a player for it to fall down to. And the one who has almost pulled off this kind of work before. However, with two smoke canisters left over the diffuser as well, they really just need to cover that. The man is too far away. And Team 1 take it 7-5 in a map that was so much closer than I think anyone even began to assume it would be. That was a great series. Probably the best one. Honestly, I think it's the best one we've had so far in the tournament. Even better than, you know, you look at Trust and Orglis. That was so back and forth. You never really knew where it was going to go. I had everything that you could have asked for. Uh, but Team 1, we expected them to go through into the quarters, but probably not to the kind of extent that we expected Samord to put up against them.
No, they did it in a fashion that was maybe a bit relaxed and laps at times, but they do move through, and yep. they will be the final team to go through on the brackets for us. They will be meeting MIBR in the quarterfinals. Ints will have Elevate and Team Liquid Love Yeah Gaming. The next play day, we'll see, obviously, Guardians, Six Sixers, Black Dragon, Supernova, and then the first of these quarterfinals, Liquid and Yeah Gaming, yeah. and that will be in a little bit of time. However, we do have streams on over the next two days, mm -hmm. including the second EU play day, but before that and tomorrow, it's the first NA play day. So that will be the first time to see some of those teams from North America start to make their mark on the OGA pit minor. Yeah, and hey, tomorrow we'll see how they really get things going. But until then, guys, it's going to be us done for tonight. Hope you enjoyed the stream. And thank you, of course, to all of our viewers tuning in. Until tomorrow. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.